Good day to everyone. This day, we are going to talk on another topic on using R for data analysis, in which we are going to focus this lecture on preparing and manipulating data. To start with, make sure class that you will, that these objectives will be able to attain by the end of this discussion. You should be able to describe the different variable classes in a data set. Then you should be able to describe the different functions used in manipulating data and you should be able to perform and write codes in performing data manipulation given a data set. Make sure that you have with you these materials and equipment. Well, this activity helps you determine the importance of data cleaning before performing data analysis. You have to use your assessment notebook to answer this part. Now, why do, you, uh, why do you think data needs to be cleaned before performing data analysis? I want you to cite some reasons why data needs to be cleaned first before you can perform data analysis. And again, I want you to write your answers on your assessment notebook. Well, this activity is again allows you to find ways to perform data cleaning using R. You can use your you may use your assessment notebook to answer this part. Again, you may search through the internet on to answer these questions. Well, what are some ways in which you can perform data cleaning in R? I want you to describe some functions used to clean data in R. Well, in our previous meeting, we have talked on how we can import data in R. Well, after data has been imported into the workspace, the first thing that we should do as data analysts is to perform data cleaning. Well, the, this data cleaning is very essential because the data that we have gathered needs to be verified. And all of those data which are not necessary for, data, for our data analysis must be removed. And this data must be treated first before we can perform data analysis. Otherwise, if we try to analyze this data directly without performing data cleaning, we might not be able to get, to get the accurate results. Say, for example, what, what if there are some duplicate entries? What if there are some missing entries? If there are missing entries, well, it could be a problem because the function that we are going to use to perform data analysis in R might behave differently. Well, when you say data cleaning, it is just like tidying the data set. We are going to clean the data set in which these operations will include renaming the variables, removing this irre irrelevant data, and it could be as simple as sorting these data observations that we have. Then you might also need to adjust data for some type of variables because Normally, you cannot perform mathematical operations on text. Therefore, if a column is recognized as text, and then we need to perform some mathematical operation on this variable, therefore, we need to convert this into numeric class before we can perform data analysis on it. Hence, we need to adjust the data type of this variable. Well, again, normally, when you import data, a data set in R, all columns class are treated as characters. Therefore, we need to convert this something into numeric so that we can perform data analysis on this column. Well, you can also rearrange or remove variables in our data set using the subset function. So, the, okay. So, 
let's talk first about a subset. When you say subset, as we have known in our from your grade 7 class, subset is just a part of a whole. Therefore, when you create a subset of a, of a data set, you need to say we are, we, are, we are going to create a smaller data set from a given data set. Okay? And it is done using a subset function. Okay? Wherein this subset function can also be used to, you, to rearrange or remove variables in a data set. And then the subset function, it contains a select argument which allows you to select the variables you want to keep with and how to perform these variables okay and how to order these variables so again the subset function is used to create a subset of your data set then within that subset function it contains the select argument okay that select argument is used to specify which variable and in what way these variables is to be arranged in your new data set that you are going to create. So thus, if you exclude a variable from the list, then they are removed in your new data set that you are going to create. So take note that whatever variables that you specify in your select, fun in your select argument will only be the variables included in your data set to be created using a subset function and then note that you can create a new data set that will hold the data set which have selected or you can overwrite them but then take note class that when you are going to, to overwrite an existing data set there's a possibility that you are going to lose your data therefore it is it is not advisable to overwrite an existing data set what I will suggest is that you have to create a new data set to hold your data prior to data manipulation because uh, along the way, there will be problems with regards with the way you manipulate data. Okay, You cannot undo operations here. Therefore, you have to make sure that you have a backup of your data before performing the data analysis. Hence, we are not going to overwrite our existing data set, but instead, we have to create a new data set that, that will hold our data prior, prior to data manipulation. Well, again, as I have said earlier, that this subset function is used to create a subset of a data set. Now, for example, we will use class the iris data set. Now, iris data set is a built-in data set in R, and we are going to create a subset of this data set, okay? Wherein, in this subset function, we are going to choose these variables, the sepal length, sepal width, beta length, and species of your iris data set. So, here's how it goes. So we have here, we have created class a new data set name, a new data set with the name of Iris One. Okay, your Iris One now holds your data set from your subset function. Again, your subset function is used to create a subset of your data set. Well, the first argument here, your Iris, okay, this one. These are the arguments of your subset function. The first argument is the name of your data set. You need to say, which data set are you trying to create a subset? Well, in this case, we use our iris data set. And then what is the name of our new data set that we are going to create? Okay, that's correct. We named it one as iris1. Iris, this iris data set is our existing data set in which we are going to create a subset from this data set and then it will be named as iris1. So your iris1 now holds the new entry or the new data set created from your 
iris data set wherein it contains these variables sepal length, width, petal length, and species. So take note class that we have heard the select function or the select argument. Your select argument is specify which variables are you going to include in your subset. And the way you order them will also be the way in which variables will appear in your data set. Well, in this case, the first column or the first column we have is your length followed by width, then petal length, and species. So that's how you are going to create a subset of a data set. Now, there are still so much more that we can do with a subset function. Well, later, we'll get to know what are these things that we can do with a subset function. Now, if you execute that command previously, uh, this one, well, the order in which the variables are ordered in the list or from your select argument will also be the same order in which the new data set will be created. So as I have said earlier, that the ordering of your variables as presented in your select argument matters. So the way you order them will also be the way in which the variables will be ordered in your data set. Well, again, if you intend class to overwrite the existing data, you will have to name it as you with your original data set, which, which in this case, it, it is named as iris. So what will happen is that after creating a subset of your iris data set in R, it will be stored back to iris data set. So the contents of iris data set will now be modified. Whatever data it can get from this operation inside your subset function will be transferred to your iris data set. So the contents of iris data set is now overwritten. Okay? That's how, to, that's how you are going to override an existing data set in R. Well, how do we remove our observations? Well, in our previous uh, examples, in our previous lessons that we have, we discuss on using the bracket notation. Do you still remember that one? The brackets we have? Okay. What, what did we use in order to remove a specific row or column? Okay, of course, we use the negative sign. Okay, that is how you're going to remove a specific observation. Okay. Now, this removing observation is particularly useful if a data set contains many variables and you want only to work on few of these. So, those variables which you do not need you will have to remove these variables because, again, it will consume space in your memory. Thus, whatever variables which you do not need, consider to remove them. Okay, for example, if you want to remove the first, third, fifth variable from your iris data set, we use this negative. So, you still remember this notation? Negative C, 1, 3, 5. So, negative will be distributed to... Um, column numbers 1, 3, and 5. Okay? That's how you're going to remove a specific uh, column or row. You have to include a negative sign. Then likewise, if you have, if you have to retain the second and third variable, you will have to write this one. Okay? You, you, will, un you, you will only select the second and the third Variable. Therefore, your iris data set now only contains your uh, second and the third variable, your iris one data set. Take note, class, that we do not overwrite our data set because we have created a new data set to hold the contents of your iris data set. This name as iris one. Now, how do we display and rename variables in a data set? Okay. So, as we have said, that variables are just the column names of a data set. 
So if you would like to know what are the list of variable names for a data set, you have to make use of your names function. Again, the names function is used to display the variables present or contained in your data set. Okay, for example, we have her names Iris1. So earlier, we have created a data set with the uh, name of Iris1. Well, right now, since we only retained the second and the third variables, therefore, it only contains two variables, which are the sepal width and the petal length. Okay? These are the two variables present in our Iris1 data set. And these variable names serves as the column names for our data set. Well, the same function can also be used to rename the variables. Now, say for example, if you want to rename these variables, sepal length, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, that's uh, sepal width and your petal length, if you want to rename these variables, then you will have to use, again, your names function. But how is it done? Okay? This is done this way. So you have here your names of your iris1, then second variable, the second variable here. Okay, your second variable, this is your first variable, this is your second, this is your index 1, and this is your index 2. So what do this, uh, what do this code will do is that it will retrieve the second variable from your iris1 data set and then sets its, its, its name to petal length. Again, this code is going to retrieve the second variable of your iris1 data set, sets its name to petal length. So which one there are constant? The names function is always constant. All other things are can be replaced. You can re replace Iris1 with the name of your data set that you're going to create. Then also with your index of the variable that you want to rename. Again, you can rename your uh, the, the, the name of your data set, the index. Then you can, you can also rename your uh, variable name. Then if you want to display whether the petal length has been renamed, you can call on the names function to display the variables of your data set and then check whether if it has already been renamed. So take note class that we use her dash and this one we use her a period. Therefore, our variable has already been renamed. And then likewise, if you want to rename two or more variables, we need to use a C function and that indicates its index. Then the new values will also be placed inside the C function. So say for example, if you wanted to rename class the first and the second variable of our iris1 or of our iris data set, we make use class of C function. Since there are now two or more variables to be renamed, we use the C function or what we call class your concatenation function. Your, con your concatenation function combines two or more values into a single vector. So it will retrieve the first and the second variable and then we will assign two different names for each variable. At index one, we will name it as sepal.length and then at index 2, we will name it as sepal.width. Therefore, if we are going to call the names function with the, our iris data set as an argument, it will display the corresponding data set uh, variables of our, of our iris data set. Take note class that we do not change all of its variable names, but instead, we only modify the first, the first, and the second 
variable of our iris data set. The first variable is named as sepal length, and then your second variable is named as sepal width. And that is how you are going to modify or rename two or more variables in your data set. Now, finally, if you wanted to rename all of the variables from your data set, you will just have to indicate the existing name or the name or the new names of your data set without specifying which index are you going to rename because it is understood that you want to modify you wanted to modify all all of the names of your variables in your existing data set say for example now to recall we our iris one data set only contains two variables the petal that length and sepal that width well in this case we use the assignment operator to tell r that we are going to assign a value to each of its variable names the first value here is the value of our first variable and the second value here will be the variable name of our second variable therefore when we run the names iris1 function or code it will display this value sepal dash width and petal dash length and that's how you are going to rename a variable so why do we need to rename our variable in a data set because currently class when we encode data there might be things like we we misrepresent the variable name for the data set and then after encoding when we try to analyze the data we just uh, realize that this should not be the name of this column we need to modify and to do that during runtime we can modify these names using these codes lines of codes in r Now, knowing the class of our variable, so what do we mean by class? When you say class of a variable, it dictates the type of data that a variable holds, whether this variable holds only numeric entries, or this variable holds alphanumeric, or this variable holds whole numbers only, or can it hold numbers with decimal values? So this, this are what we call as the class of our variable. So how do we display the class of our variable? So to do this, we use the class function. Again, the class function is used to display the class of our variable. When you say class of a variable, again, it relates to the type of data that a variable holds. Now, this is how you are going to call the class function. You have to type your class function, then the data set that you are going to examine, what, what is its variable class, dollar sign, and then the variable that you are going to examine. Okay, so try some example. Now, for example, to view all the class of a variable simultaneously, we use the following syntax as apply, then data set, then the class. Again, the class function is used to your class function is used to retrieve the type of data that your variable holds. Again, earlier, that code earlier is used to retrieve an individual variable. You, you only want to examine a specific variable in your data set. Well, this time, we try to examine the type of variables or the type of or the class of a variable of all the variables in a given data set. Okay, now there are many types of classes in R. Okay, it could be numeric, it could be integers, it could be a factor, or it could be a character. 
Now let us get to know each of these variable class. Now when you say numeric, it contains a real number that is either positive or negative with or without a decimal point. For as long class as these entries are all numeric contents, it is classified as numeric variable. Then it can also contain missing data symbols, NA. Then how about your integer? Your, in your integer type class of a variable are only those numeric entry which contains a whole number without a fractional part. Again, the numeric variables are, can contain with or without decimals. But then when you say integer, it only takes hold of whole numbers without decimal part. Then when you say factor variables, these are categorical in nature. Say for example, we have here gender. Gender can, can either be male or female. Therefore, since gender here contains some categories, it is classified as a factor variables. And then technical class that alphanumeric variables, alphanumeric contents are treated as factor variables. Okay? Whether or not we have categories, for as long as it contains alphanumeric, it is always classified as a factor variables. And since they are factor variables, you cannot perform mathematical operation on these variables. It has to be translated or converted into numeric or integer variable so that you can perform mathematical operations on these variables. Then another type of class is what we call character. Now a character only contains a single letter. Again, factor can be it can be a word, a group of words, or sentences. When you say character, it is only a single letter. Okay, it contains a single character. It can be a Unicode character, simple letters, single letters, single character, or symbols. Now, for example, if you wanted to view the variable class of a single variable of a data set in Iris. We could have this function or code. Again, the class function is used to get the variable class. And then iris here is our data set that we wanted to use. And then sepal length here is a variable in iris data set that we want to examine. We wanted to know what is the variable class of sepal length variable from your iris data set. And upon executing this code, we have known that sepal length is numeric because it is placed here numeric. Okay. And to view all of the variable class of your iris data set, we call the s supply function. S supply, then the name of our data set here is iris, and then we use the class function. The class function again retrieves the variable class of a variable in a data set. Therefore, it is displayed here that length is numeric while species is a factor variable. Okay? Categorical in nature that is factor. Single letter or single character that is character. Can only hold uh, whole numbers. That is what they call integer type. And those that can hold uh, with or without decimals, that is of numeric type. Alright? Those are some examples of the variable class of a variable. Well, as you have said earlier, when we import a SV file in our workspace, all the columns are, or each variable class is determined automatically by R according to its content. Now, if the variable, again, for example, if a certain variable in your data set or in your CSV file contains any non-numeric values, it is always treated to a factor class. Again, 
if there is a single entry in your data in your column from your csv file which is non-numeric in, nat in nature this column is automatically treated as non-numeric but then say for example that entry is just a typographical error okay therefore you need to convert that to numeric type to perform mathematical operation on this column sometimes the variable class assigned is inappropriate and in this case we need to convert this variable to its appropriate class type and hence we need to convert them so there are ways in which you can convert a variable class could be numeric character or factor now to convert a variable class to factor we use the fang we use this as fang a, es factor or as factor okay for example this is how you have to use the as factor function the data set that you are going to use then the variable name of the data set that you wanted to convert and then your as factor function then the data set of your original data set that you're going to use and then its variable okay for example we have here we, want, we, want, uh, we wanted to convert the iris one data set of sepal with variable to factor type or to factor class so what this will do is going to is that is it is going to use your iris on data set then your sepal width variable and convert that to factor class okay so as we have known that sepal width previously is numeric and right now we have just converted that to factor type so how do we know it is factor type now so of course we use the class function okay the class function retrieves the variable class of a variable in your data set so we which have checked here that we use iris one data set and then we call the class type of sepal width and it is placed now factor so from numeric type it is converted to factor class or factor type and factor type when these are categorical in nature then note that one cannot perform mathematical operations in a factor variable hence it needs to be converted to numeric class by using the as that numeric function okay so this is how we are going to convert a variable class to numeric we use the as that numeric function so again your data set that you're going to use then the variable that you wanted to convert to numeric then of course we have your as that numeric function to convert our data set to numeric then of course our data set and then the variable that we are going to convert to numeric for example we are going to convert back the sepal width to its original variable class type which is numeric so in this case we use here the as numeric function then our data set name iris1 then our variable that we're going to use is sepal width the same is true with here iris1 and then the sepal width okay we convert that to numeric so by calling the class function we wanted to know whether it has really changed and good to know that it is now back to numeric class type then we can also convert a variable to character so we use this as character function okay a variable is converted as a character class okay we use the same pattern except that from as numeric has been changed to as character or an as factor 
Now, how do we create a new variable in our data set? Now, perhaps class, you might want to perform mathematical operation, a certain column in R, or in, in a certain column in your data set, and then store that uh, variable or store, store that column as a variable in your data set. Yeah, say, for example, you have here your age, uh, present age, and then you want to create a column in your data set which will reflect your age 10 years from now. So that is age plus 10. So in your current age, it is added with 10 years. Therefore, you want it to store that age plus 10 to your existing data set. So you will, you will have to create a new variable in your data set. Okay, so, uh, as stated here that one can create a new variable within a data set based on how you created a new object using assignment operator. For example, if you create a new variable named as var2, which is a copy of your existing variable var1, we use this command. Again, we created a new data set or we created a new variable from your existing data set which is a copy of your var1 variable so how do we do that so first we need to know which data set are we going to create a copy and then which data set are we going to store the, its content then this is now our source data set and then this is our source data set and this is our source variable. Then this data set here is our destination data set. And this one is our destination variable. Okay. So what does it do? It will retrieve the entries of your var1 variable from your data set and store that one to var2 of your destination data set. Now we'll try this example. Okay. We created here, uh, we use the same data set which is iris1. And then what, what we do is that hmm, we create a new variable of your iris1 data set named as sepal with 2. And then its content will be all entries of your sepal with column or sepal with variable. So there is now a duplicate of entries. Okay, we have here a new column of your iris one data set named as sepal with two. Okay, so sepal with two now contains the same contents as your sepal with. Okay, my, my my point here is that I just wanted you to show how we can create a new variable from an existing variable in your data set okay but we can perform mathematical operations from an existing variable for example this one we use here the trees data set okay and then we create a new column named as girth.cm well the existing girth of your trees data set is measured in terms of inches but then we wanted to create a column that will reflect its value in centimeters. So normally, to convert inches to centimeter, we need to multiply it by 2.54. Uh, so how do we do that? Again, we created a new variable in our trees data set. So what will be its content? Now, the contents of our girth cm variable is that the girth of our the girth variable multiplied by 2.4 rounded off to two decimal places. Again, the value of our girth that cm variable will be the product of the existing trees girth variable times 2.54 rounded off to two decimal places. So currently, trees variable has three variables or the three data set has three variables which are the girth, volume, and height. But then we 
have added a new variable named as girls.cm. And then girls.cm, this one, this, this column has been multiplied with 2.54 to reflect its value in centimeters. So we have just performed a mathematical operation on our existing variable in a data set and store that as a new variable in our data set. So we have now have a new variable, which is your girls cm, which is taken from the girls data from the girls variable multiplied by 2.54. Well, you may also create a copy of a tree data set by assigning a tree data set of value. For example, uh, we wanted to create a duplicate of our tree data set, so. We create and here a new data set, then we assign it, we give it a value, and then its value will be the contents of your tree's data set. Okay? We just create a copy of our tree's data set and we name it as trees1. Well, one also we create a categorical variable based on existing continuous variables by classifying them. For example, uh, let, let us consider the tree set. set. For instance, you would like to create a variable named as height category, which will classify the height of trees as to short, medium, or tall. Uh, let us say, for example, those trees whose height is between uh, 60 feet and 70 feet are classified as short, while those trees between 70 feet and 80 feet are classified as medium. And those trees whose side falls between 80 feet and 90 feet are classified as tall. So to do this class, so right, uh, right from our description, we created a category of their height, which, which will then be classified as short, medium, or tall based on the given range. 60 to 70, short, 70 to 80, medium, then 80 to 90, that is tall. So, how do we create the categories for them? Are we going to assign them manually? Well, of course, we can use R to give a category for their height based on existing category. Okay, how do we do this? So, again, class, we use the cut function. So, the cut function is used to create a category for a continuous variable. So how does it work? Again, to create a category for a continuous variable, we use the cat function. Then of course, cat function contains arguments. Okay, the first argument is that which variable are you going to use? For that case, we use their trees dollar height. Then second is that the second argument that you are going to, to specify is the range of value. The range of value has three and trees or four. We have our 60, 70, 80, and 90. Since there are four of them, it shall be enclosed in a C function. Then finally, the last part of our cut function or the last argument of our cut function will be its values okay so the values will be because it will be classified as short medium or tall okay now uh, one can also as lots are assign the category automatically without having to specify the range of value. Because earlier, we specified the range of value like 60 to 70 will be classified as short, and then 70 to 80 will be classified as medium, and then 80 to 90 will be classified as tall. But this time, we we'll let R to create its own range of value, such that we are just going to specify its categories. Okay, for example, this one. Well, in this case, we only specify 
how many categories are we going to give to our variable which is height well in this case the height variable will be divided into three categories and what and what will be each category again it is short medium and tall so unlike in our previous slide in our previous slide we specify the range of value or the range in which a certain category or in which a certain measurement falls like 60 70 80 and 90 but this time we only specify in how many ways that we are going to divide a specific continuous variable but in this case we wanted to divide it into three parts with the label of short medium and tall so in this case R will have to assign automatically a range of value such that our data will be divided into short, medium, and tall depending on its category. So we don't specify the range of value, but we just specify in how many ways will our continuous variable will be divided and then give it a label of short, medium, and tall. So right now, we created a new data, a new variable which is named as height cut auto. Why auto? Because this column is automatically generated. While well, this column, we assign the range of value. Remember, we assign the range of values like 60, 70, 80, and 90. While well, this one, we just assign it as 3. And let's R assign automatically. Okay, short here, still short, medium, okay. Uh, one here, one classification here. In our manual classification, it is classified as medium. While for automatically assignment of category, it is assigned as tall. So R has its own range of value, which will specify which one is short, which one is medium, and which one is tall. Unlike here that we assign manually which ones are tall, which ones are short, and which ones are medium. Okay, should you have any questions, class, please feel free to ask. Okay. Now, we have here viewing and renaming the categories of our variable. We can, we can view and rename the categories of our variable. So, categories are the factor variables. Well, the levels of a factor variable represents the categories of a given variable. And to, view, and to view the levels of a factor variable, we use the levels function. For example, of here levels, again, the levels function is used to retrieve the categories of a factor variable. So what are the categories for this variable? Well, this levels function has this, has this syntax. The name of your data set, which, uh, which in this case is trees. Again, our data set considered here is trees. And then the factor variable that we wanted to view its categories is the height cut. Okay? The height cut variable is a factor variable which contains the categories as short, medium, and tall. Then one may also rename the levels of our variable. For example, if you wanted to rename all of its categories, then we could have these lines of code. Have here the levels, then the name of your data set, followed by the factor variable, and then assignment operator, then its new category label. Okay? The short, medium, and tall are now replaced with S, M, and T. So take note class that we do not specify the index because we wanted to rename all of its categories. S is for short, M for medium, and T for tall. So again, class, this one, if we do not if we do not specify which index are we going to rename, it is taken into account that we are going to rename all of its categories. Okay, hence when we call the function levels on the height cut variable of our three data set, it is now labeled as S, M, and T. Now, when we add or remove observations in a data set, 
by modifying the data presented in your data editor window. This is done by using the fix function. Now, for example, this is how you would use your fix function. You fix and then the name of your data set. Now, for example, now here, fix trace. So, when you execute this command, the data editor window will be displayed. And then, right from your data editor window, you can edit the data. Okay? And then, after editing, you can directly change its contents. Then, when done editing, click close for the changes to take in effect. Then, aside, use, aside from using the fix func function, you can also use the bracket notation. Okay? This one. One that we have talked earlier. Or if you want to remove the second and to the tenth observation, use this one. Then another thing that we can do to prepare our data prior to data manipulation or prior to data analysis is to remove duplicate entries because these are not needed. Okay? So this is done using the, the unique function. Okay? That is a unique function which is going to use, which, uh, which is to be used to remove duplicate entries. Right? So, uh, this is how you are going to use a unique function. The name of your data set, then the unique function, which is used to remove duplicate entries, and then the name of your data set in which you're going to remove your entries, your duplicate entries. For example, uh, if you wanted to remove the duplicate entries from our trees data set, we make use of our unique function. Then inside our open and close parentheses is our tree data set. Let to say we are going to remove all duplicate entries from our tree data set and store it into trees function uh, trees data set. Let to say class trees now contains unique values. So there are no duplicate entries because it is now being removed using the unique function. Again, unique function, it will remove all duplicate entries. So, trees now is assumed to contain unique entries because this, all duplicate entries are now, has now been removed using the unique function. Then, one may also want to retrieve the duplicate entries for a data set. Again, if you wanted to, re to retrieve what are these entries which has duplicate value, you can use the duplicated function. So it is the opposite of the previous function. The unique function is going to remove all duplicate entries. Whereas your duplicated function is used to, re to retrieve all those entries which has duplicates. Okay? If you wanted to know what are these entries which has duplicate entries or duplicate, uh, duplicate value, you can make use of your duplicated function. Okay, this is how it is being used. The name of your variable to hold your or the name the name of your of your data set to hold the duplicate entries, then the data set name, then duplicated function, and then your data set and then comma. For example, okay, for example class, we wanted to check whether our trees data set has duplicate entries. Okay, we have here, and from that, we are going to stall, store the duplicated entries in our dupes variable or in our dupes data set. Again, our dupes data set will now contain the entries or the duplicate entries of our trees data set if there are. But then, if there are not, so it will show zero rows mean to say there are no duplicated entries so again what this function will do is that it will retrieve all the duplicated entries from your tree data set and then store it to your dupes data set and then when we try to display the contents of our, our dupes data set to see if there are duplicated entries it shows no rows therefore all entries there from our tree data set is unique. Now we can also create a subset of a data set by defining those data which will match our criteria set. Okay? 
we can now set a criteria of which data is to be included in our subset. Okay? Now, one good thing is that you can scale down your data leaving only those data that you wanted to use. So, those data uh, which will not fit in your criteria will be removed. So, you can now set criteria which data is to be included in your data set. And this operation can be done using the subset function. Now, say for example class, you wanted to create a data set to contain only those data that you are going to use. So this is how you are going to use the subset function to specify a criteria on whose data is to be included in your analysis. Now here again, your subset function, then your data set that you are going to use, and then finally, the condition. So which condition or which data set or which entries are you going to include? you have to specify the existing condition. Now, for example, we are, we are going to use your pyromycin data set. Okay? So, what do this code do? So, firstly, we created a new data set. Okay? Our new data set now is named as treated pyromycin. And then from here, we have a subset function to specify that we are going to create a subset of a data set. And then the name of our data set from which a, sub from which a subset is created is our pyromycin. Then we define here that state must be equal to treated. So in short, this command is going to retrieve data from pyromycin whose state is equal to untreated and store them to treated pyromycin. Therefore, our treated pyromycin only contains all those entries whose state is equal to treated. And as reflected here, when we type the name of our data set, which is treated pyromycin, it displays that the state is equal to treated, while those states which is equal to untreated is not included. Okay, then another example. We create a subset of our tree data set wherein the height category is either short or tall. Again, that is your percent in percent C. Okay, so percent in percent C means to say what are these entries which will be part here will be serve as basis for that data. So percent and percent class, it selects an option. Whether the high category is short or tall. Either short or tall, the data will be included. Okay? For example, this one. A tall trees tall short is our new data set, which is created from the subset of our trees data set. And then we specify that the height category variable shall either be short or tall. Therefore, our trees tall short data set only contains those entries whose height category or height cut is either equal to short or tall. Again, take note class that we use the percent in percent. So how to use percent in percent? To use class percent and percent, we will just have to define your variable name from your data set. So trees here is our data set and height cut is our variable name and we wanted to select only those having short or tall. If you could have here like uh, medium, then you may want to include that. It depends on the criteria being set okay again percent and percent it shows the option for which you can use in your data analysis or in your selection of your subset of your data set now take note class that 
double equal sign is different from okay double equal sign is different or not equal to single equal sign why when you say double equal sign this is a comparison operator while single equal sign it is an assignment operator okay double equal sign we compare the value when we say single equal sign that is we assign a value to a specific variable or data set now for example we created here a subset of three data set whose height category or whose height cut variable is not equal to tall so all those entries whose height cut is not equal to tall has been displayed okay that is subset so take note class that we don't assign a new data set it is because we wanted only to view what are those entries whose height cut is not equal to tall so of course these are the entries whose, whose height cut is not equal to tall but then class if you wanted to assign it to a specific um, to a specific data set you could have here as a uh, trees two okay it depends on your preference but if but then if i only instructed to view those entries so no need to assign a specific value or a specific name of a data set okay so aside from double equal sign you can use this other comparison operators double equal sign that equal that is exclamation point equal that is not equal to greater than lesser than lesser than equal to greater than or equal to and then take note class that again single equal sign is not different from a double equal sign when you say a single equal sign you are assigning a value whereas when you use double equal sign it denotes that you are comparing two quantities okay for example we, we again we display this all entries whose height is lesser than 80 okay so that means all these entries uh, satisfies the given condition therefore it shows here in our console window all these heights are lesser than 80 so these are the ones which fits into our condition well, well we can also combine two or more comparison operator using the logical operators you can have either and or or so how does it work so again if you combine two comparison operators you have to make use of your logical operator well if the first condition is false and then the second condition is false the result is false if the first condition is true and the second condition is false the result is still false if the first condition is false and the second condition is false the result is also false if the first condition is true and the second condition is also true the result is true so what does it mean when we when we use the and logical operator when we say and logical operator it means to say class that both first and second condition must be true for the result to be true say for example when you try to log into your social media account does it mean that if your username is correct and your password is incorrect and you log into your account well of course not how about if you're in this case if your username is incorrect and your password is correct can you log into your social media like Facebook well of course not it needs both your username and password to be correct before you can log in so logging into your email and your social media account is an example of an and truth table or and logical operator your username is your first condition and your password is your second condition and then logging in here is your result if your username is correct that is true and your password is also correct that is true 
Therefore, you can log into your social media account. Is your username and your password is correct? Therefore, you can log into your social media account. It makes use of and logical operator. So again, where do we use this and logical operator? Okay, they are again used to combine two or more comparison or two or more conditions. Say for example, we have this condition. We, we wanted to view all entries of your three data set whose height is greater than or equal to 70 and height category and height cut must be equal, equal to <coughs> so again in this uh, line of code what is the uh, what it does is that uh, it combines these two conditions the height must be greater than or equal to 70 and the height category must be equal to tall so it specifies there that these two conditions must be satisfied so that the data will be displayed. So both height must be greater than or equal to 70 and its category must be equal to tall for the data must to be displayed. So these are the data which satisfies a given condition. <coughs> okay, so aside class from AND, if we say AND, both the first and second condition must be true before the data will be selected. So the two conditions must be satisfied first before the data will be classified or can be part of the condition. Whereas when you say OR, let us try to examine how does this OR logical operator works. In your logical, uh, in your first condition, if the first condition is false and the second condition is true, then the result is true. If the first condition is true and the second condition is false, the result is still true. If the first condition and second condition is true, the result is true. But then, if both conditions are false, the result is false. So, what does it imply? If the AND logical operator, the both, con uh, both conditions must be true before the result will turn true. In your OR logical operator, if, if at least one of the condition is true, then it will return true. Say, for example, if the AND operator is used to log into your, social media, your uh, Facebook account wherein it needs your username and password to be correct before you can log in, to retrieve, to retrieve your user, to retrieve your password for your Facebook account, it just need your email address or your contact number to reset your password. So in that case, either you will provide your email address or you will provide your contact number, and you are good to go to reset your password. And that is how your OR logical operator will work. Either any of these conditions will be true to return the true result. Now, for example, given this condition, we wanted to display all those entries of your three data set whose girth is greater than or whose girth is lesser than or equal to 15 or the height category is not equal to tall. So again, we wanted to retrieve <clears throat> all those entry whose girth is lesser than or equal to 15 and whose height category or height cut is not equal to tall. Take note class that either the girth is lesser than or equal to 15 or the height cut is not equal to tall. So either any of these conditions will turn true and the data will be displayed. So girth can either be lesser than, lesser than or equal to 15 or the height cut is not equal to tall. Either any of these conditions will return true for the data to be displayed into this console window.
<clears throat> okay. You may also specify class which variables are you going to include. So, for example, we use the same function, uh, we use the same data set trees, then we use the same condition. The girth is greater than or equal to 15 or the height cut is not equal to tall. But then we specify here the, we specify class the variables to be included in our data set or to be displayed. So, in this case, we wanted to display only the girth and the height cut of our trees data set. Therefore, we specify here that we selected only the girth and the height cut variables of your data set. So, again, we specify which variable is to be displayed in your data set or to be displayed in your console window. <clears throat> Then lastly, is how are we going to order data? To order data in your data set, you will have to use the order function. Okay, you have there your order function, which is used to sort your results. Then your order function takes two arguments. Firstly, the variable for which the ordering is to be based, and then whether you will you will have to whether you will sort it ascending or descending okay so if you want to sort it ascending then you will have to uh, then no, no need to have this argument uh, because what it will do is that decreasing is equal to t is that it will sort the data in descending order so what will this function will do or this command will do well this command is basically going to create a new data set named as trees1 and then after which it is going to sort your girth variable of your trees data set into descending order because it is stated here that decreasing is equal to t so i'm going to say that is decreasing is equal to true therefore it starts with the highest value down to the lowest value so from here if we are going to see the output of this one data set, it starts with the highest value of girth, which is 20, down to the lowest value we have here, 16. So, what about class if you wanted to display it in ascending order? So, you can omit this one. You, may, you can remove this one, and it is automatically sorted in ascending order. Again, we'll just make use of the order function, and then it takes two arguments. The name of the variable on which the ordering will be based, and then you will either you will sort it as ascending or descending. Again, if you sort it as ascending, you can remove this argument, and you are good to go. And that is how you are going to order your data set. To order the result of your data set. Okay, so, so far, in this, uh, <coughs> okay, one can also sort data in more than one variable. For example, you wanted to sort the results firstly by cut height cut and then its height. And take note class that we don't specify here that decreasing is equal to t. So, automatically, it is in ascending order. So, again, we sort the data according to their category, and then after, after ordering their category, we sort them according to height. So, there are two categories, or there are two sorting variables, which are the height cut and our height variable. And it is sort in <coughs> ascending order. And that is how we are going to sort. We have our order, trees, height, cut, and then trees, height, then close parentheses, then bracket. But then class, say for example, you wanted to sort it in decreasing order or a descending order, you can have here your decreasing is equal to t. And it will sort your data in descending order. For this one, since we, since we do not specify here whether it is arranged or sorted 
in descending or ascending order, decreasing is equal to t, since we do not specify that argument, it is automatically sorted in ascending order. Again, should you, have, uh, should you have any questions or clarifications, please feel free to ask so that I can entertain your questions. Okay? Thank you for watching and see you in our next lecture.